Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new powerful mini PC from Menace Forum known as the UM690S. Actually, one of my favorite from their Venus series. And with this, we do have some upgrades. Plus, we've got driver updates to kind of take a look at to see how performance has progressed. And I've been doing some testing with this chip. I'm really impressed by what this thing can do. Now the main claim to fame to the S variant we have here is the new cooling system that Menace Forum has implemented. And if you're familiar with Menace Forum's mini PCs, you know they do have some of the best coolers when it comes to these Ryzen APUs. And I suspect with this new cooling system, we're going to see some lower temps even at really high wattages. But inside of the box, along with the UM690S, we get a 120 watt power supply. HDMI cable, a mounting bracket along with some hardware so we can actually mount this on the bottom of a table, on the wall, or the back of a monitor. And this mini PC also supports a 2.5 inch drive in the bottom of the unit. So we've got the cabling here along with some hardware to get that mounted up inside. Now I did want to take a look at their older Venus series unit just to give you an idea of what the difference is here. And as you can see it is a bit taller and that's because we've got a new cooling system in the bottom of this unit. Actually using a dual fan design. As you can see, we've got a lot more ventilation here as opposed to the older versions. So this should allow it to pull in more cool air. And when it comes to IO on the 690S, up front here, we've got a 3.5 millimeter combo jack, USB 4, and this does support 40 gig protocol. We can easily connect an eGPU. We've also got another USB-C port, and this is only 3.2 Gen 2. But moving around back, we've got our power input, 2.5 gigabit ethernet port and dual HDMI ports that support 4K 60 out. The cheapest option they offer over on their website for the UM690S is the bare bones model, which means you will need to add your own RAM and storage and getting in here is relatively easy. As you can see, we've got that new cooling system down here, dual fans. We've basically got a wide open area to pull a lot of air in. They're also using their new M.2 cooler, so that air will flow over the RAM and the M.2 to keep everything nice and chilly down here. But I kind of like this setup. I know it's a bit taller than the older versions that they offer, but in order to get those lower temps, I think this is something they definitely needed to do. Now, when it comes to the specs of the UM690S for the CPU or APU, we've got the AMD Ryzen 9 6900HX. 8 cores, 16 threads, a base clock of 3.3 GHz and a boost up to 4.9. This is based on Zen 3 Plus, so it's not a Zen 4 APU, but with driver updates and everything, you'll see the performance. I mean, I was kind of blown away by what this thing can do. The iGPU is the Radeon 680M with 12 CUs up to 2400 MHz. This one happens to have 32GB of DDR5 in dual channel running at 4800 MHz. We've also got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.2, and I'm going to be running Windows 11, but if anybody wants to see SteamOS or any variant of Linux running on this mini PC, let me know in the comments below. Another couple things we have here with the 690S is their dual heatsink. So this is really awesome, and it's actually one of my favorite coolers for these mini PCs. We've been able to take the wattage up quite high on some of these chips with this exact cooling system here, and along with this, they've also implemented liquid metal. So yeah, I mean, we can definitely go up with the TDP on this thing if we wanted to. Using that Ryzen 9 6900HX as an everyday PC is going to work out great. You want to do some video editing, you can get it done. Photo editing, web browsing, email checking, document editing. It handles 4K video playback like a champ. So in this video, I kind of wanted to take a look at just gaming performance. And the first thing I wanted to show off here was the TDP. So base TDP out of the box with that CPU and GPU maxed out here, 70 watts. But you can always use a third-party application to take this up a bit. Now it's not recommended by Menace Forum. They've got these set up out of the box the way they want them. So do this at your own risk. But yeah, it can definitely unlock a lot of performance. And you know, keep in mind, with the 680M or any of these iGPUs, they do require a little wattage to keep those clocks up. Now this will go up to 2400 megahertz, and through my testing, I've seen this max out at about 38 watts just on the iGPU side. So having that extra wattage to keep the clocks up on the CPU and the GPU at the same time is really where it's at with these mini PCs. I also wanted to give you a look at the driver version we're on. 23.11.1 and of course this is going to be higher in the future but since we're working with rdna2 graphics we don't have access to hyper rx that's something that amd has recently implemented for rdna3 that kind of combines all of their technologies 
anti-lag super resolution together to get a little better performance, but I don't actually think we need it here with the 680M. Now, I did mention that I'm really impressed with the iGPU performance, and we're going to jump right into a little bit of gameplay here with Forza Motorsports. If you've tried this on a lower-end GPU, you know how hard it can be to run. Right now, we are at 900p low settings, but even on the 780M, we've been having trouble getting up to 60. But this is actually handling it quite well. Now, we do get some dips here and there, and if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that our Radeon Boost is kicking in. We're up to around 80 watts on this APU. If you take a look at that temperature, we're not even close to thermal throttling. This will go up to 95 before it needs to thermal throttle itself to cool down. And our iGPU clock is at 2400 megahertz. So we are sending sufficient power to the CPU and GPU to get a game like this running at full speed on an RDNA 2 iGPU. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were some GPU benchmarks using 3 Mark. Here's Night Raid coming in with a 23,987. Firestrike, 7,756, and surprisingly, Time Spy gave us a 3,089. So with the new 7,000 series APUs and RDNA 3 graphics, the highest score I've gotten with Time Spy on the Ryzen Z1 Extreme was 3,300, so we're not far off here with RDNA 2. I ran the built-in benchmark here with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. We're at 1080p, but I do have resolution scale set to 75%. And with this, we got an average of 62 FPS. Spider-Man Remastered was really impressive, but I did take it down to 720p. I probably should have just went to 900p with it, seeing what kind of performance we're getting here. Not too bad. On average, we got 81 FPS, which is way more than I was expecting. I mean, this is one of those games that's always given us trouble on iGPUs, but with these newer driver updates, we're seeing some great performance here. Next, we have Forza Horizon 5 1080p medium settings. We got an average of 88 FPS with this, and I don't have any kind of ray tracing on. I always turn it off. I think at medium, it does default to off. On the 780M, the RDNA 3i GPUs, I usually go to high 1080. We're seeing the same kind of performance here, and with that, we also turn off ray tracing. But yeah, I mean, definitely playable on this little setup. Here's God of War 900p original settings. FSR is set to performance. That's really going to help out with this unless you want to go down to 720. And even then, I mean, it's really not that bad taking FSR to balanced. It still looks pretty good at 720, but I wanted to leave it here at 900p. And we got an average of 68 FPS. And the final game here is Cyberpunk 2077. 1080p, we're at low settings, and when I say low, I go into the settings there, make sure everything is turned to low. We also have FSR set to performance. We got an average of 74 FPS, and I've tested this extensively on the 780M iGPU, which is based on RDNA 3. At about 50 watts in the ROG Ally, we can average 78. So again, not that far off. I'm really impressed by what these graphics are doing. Another thing I wanted to talk about here was total system power consumption from the wall. So while I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter. It's not a low power consumption PC by any means, because at idle, we're at 19 watts. Average gaming jumped up to around 84. And while doing an extreme stress test, maxing out the iGPU, 8 cores and 16 threads, we saw a total wattage pull from the wall of 112. Now it does come with that 120 watt power supply, so we're under that. But yeah, I mean, to get this kind of performance, it definitely needs to draw some wattage. Overall, I think performance is looking great here, and I was really surprised to see how close it's coming to the 780M graphics based on RDNA 3. We're working with a Zen 3 Plus CPU, so we're not going to see the kind of performance we see out of Zen 4, but these graphics are definitely keeping up, especially with those new AMD drivers. If you're interested in learning a little more about the Menace Forum UM690S, I will leave some links in the description. And like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you want to see SteamOS or any other Linux distro running on this mini PC, let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. And like always, thanks for watching.